If you're looking for an affordable pocket knife with the best possible edge retention, then it's never been a better time to be a knife fanatic. I'm David C. Anderson coming at you from the Knife Center, and these are the best EDC folding knives with D2 steel that you can get for less than $50 right now in 2019. Let's check them out. In this day and age of constant improvement, there's always new steels coming out claiming to be the latest and the greatest. But not everything is happening on just the high-end stuff. Sometimes the classic blade materials are still a phenomenal choice. One of the most exciting things to happen in the last couple of years is the proliferation of D2 steel at a far lower price point than we used to be able to get. In fact, there are a ton of great options right now that can be had for $50 or less. Why is this so great? Two words, edge retention. It's going to be hard to beat properly heat treated D2 when you compare it to similar low priced and entry level pocket knives. The first one we'll look at today has been an affordable favorite for years, it's the Ontario Rat 1. This knife was originally released and is still available with AUS 8 for a more stainless option, D2 of course being a tool steel that's only semi stainless, but ever since the upgrade to D2 that keeps the Rat 1 among the ranks of the best cheap pocket knives in existence. The drop point blade is 3.6 inches long, although there's also a 3 inch model available with the RAT Model 2, and it features a flat grind and a versatile shape. The RAT 1 has long been a favorite of campers and bushcrafters, it's efficient cutting and has enough belly to work as a hunting or a skinning knife, and it also makes a great bigger utility blade for EDC or any kind of hard work. Part of that is thanks to the roomy nylon handles that are also thicker than some knives out there to provide a solid grip and you've got dual full liners to back them up for strength. Thanks to that girth, it makes it real easy to grip this knife hard and bear down when you need a really powerful cut. Still, there's a nice section of ricasso here in front of the handle that you can use to choke up on for more detailed or controlled cuts. You can get the handle in the OD green that you see here, as well as black, coyote brown, desert tan, and others. Securing the blade, we have a nice liner lock for safety, and we've got dual thumb studs to open it. Now despite using simple washers, it can still be made to flick quite nicely. One last thing that Ontario gives us with the Rat 1 that you don't see on a lot of knives out there is a four position pocket clip. Using this, you can carry it either tip up or tip down on either side, which is a really nice touch. The next great D2 design is an awesome tactical knife, the Kershaw Emerson CQC6K D2. This knife is part of a series that brings Emerson's awesome combat knife designs to an affordable price point through the partnership with Kershaw. The key thing this gets us is the addition of the Emerson Wave Opener, which is this hook on the spine here. It's designed to rotate the blade open as you pull it from your pocket by catching it on the hem of your pants as you draw. It can, of course, be opened more conventionally. We've got an ambidextrous thumb plate here that works well for lefties or righties. We've got a three and a quarter inch blade with a straight clip point. Makes it good for more than just combat. It's also a solid everyday carry knife. Comes with a two-tone finish, stonewashed hollow grinds, and a horizontal satin on the flats of the blade. As for the handles, we've got stainless steel on the back side with a strong frame lock and G10 on the front. It's not quite as aggressive a texture on the G10 as the true non-Kershaw Emersons, so it's not as much outright traction, but by the same token, they're going to be kinder to your hands. It'll be kinder to your pockets too, no matter which side you carry the knife on. Since we do get a nice reversible tip-up pocket clip, both the smooth stainless steel or the smoother G10 won't abrade your pockets quite as much. Despite that, we still get plenty of grip though, and that's thanks to a prominent finger groove. It really helps lock the knife into your grip so that you can tackle anything you need to. So we've seen a popular workhorse and a tactical knife, so how about a capable style piece? Right now we've got the CRKT Large Pilar, designed by Jesper Vaknes, featuring a broad sheep's foot blade, which is almost a pocket cleaver. We've got similar construction with this knife as we had on the Kershaw. We've got a stainless steel frame lock, finished black in this case, and a black G10 front scale. What's cool about this design is it folds up nice and small, so it doesn't take up too much space in your pocket but it opens either with the flipper tab or the thumb cutout on the blade, and it reveals a full working handle length. And that's thanks to a full-size finger choil ahead of the flipper where you can place your index finger. This lets you get a lot of work out of the two and three eighths of an inch of edge itself. The blade itself features a black oxide coating, which is gonna help prevent corrosion on that D2 steel. And the shape is great for powerful cuts or for any kind of scoring cuts as well. With the tip angled down, it works great on any type of draw cut, and because of the shape, the tip itself is very strong. 
We've got a two position pocket clip, but it's set up for right side carry only, but you do get options for tip up or tip down. Now you can get this knife with a stainless blade option in this size, as well as a smaller version, but no matter which you prefer, this stylish folder with a minimalist aesthetic is sure to turn heads. Now the next knives I'm going to present come from a brand called Steel Will and the Modus Mini Liner Locking Flipper. A great compact design with fluid lines and a two and three quarter inch blade, although there is a three and a quarter inch blade option too. But the mini version is a great length for locales that have restrictive length limits and you still get a good amount of edge to work with. It measures just shy of even with the front end of the scales. The blade has a flat grind and a continuous curve to the edge. Great for long sweeping cuts as the edge follows the motion of your elbow. And all of them keep the edge itself nice and thin for efficient cutting. Satin or black stonewashed blade finishes are offered as options, as well as several different colors of FRN handles and backspacer combos. We get a tip up pocket clip, which is reversible for left or right carry. And the knife has a three finger grip mostly, but you can still choke up a bit onto the flipper tab and get a good gorilla grip on the knife for heavier cuts when you need to. Speaking of the flipper, it runs on bronze washers and the action is tuned perfectly. It proves that while bearings are generally regarded as the best way to go, a good flipper can still be executed without them. However, this next knife proves that those bearings are a nice option to have. This is the Steel Wheel Tenet, a great knife for everyday use, or even as a backup tactical knife with fantastic flipping action. The black coated blade features a straight clip point and a fairly long one at that. I love how far back along the spine it goes. It gives us a nice point but still enough belly to be versatile for all kinds of different tasks. And it's got that high flat grind and thin edge too for great slicing, just like the Modus Mini. The G10 handles have a faceted look, but they're still comfortable to hold. We've also got dual skeletonized liners that add some extra rigidity without adding too much weight. We even get a reversible left or right side pocket clip folded over for deep carry style with only a little bit of handle sticking up above. This small detail on the steel wheel tenant lets you pack a big punch in your pocket without really advertising itself. You can be nice and discreet until you're ready to cut and that's a task you'll have no problem with. So as you would expect at these prices, these knives have all been imported, but it's no secret that the Chinese brands themselves are doing a big part to lead the charge in this segment. The first we'll talk about is CJRB. And while they may be new, they're setting a new standard at this price point. Essentially the budget subsidiary of Artisan Cutlery, these knives are built on the same line by the same people who build those knives, and the Crag and the Tala are their most distinctive designs. The Tala coming with an angular Warncliffe shape, and the Crag with a cleaver profile that's so popular right now. These knives manage to bring ball bearing pivots, strong liner locks, and an astoundingly good build quality to a $40 price at this point in time. The Crag is available with flat G10 handles or the carbon fiber you see here for a couple bucks extra. The flat ground blade is good and broad without being too unwieldy. It's just a great shape and it has a stonewashed finish, which is a personal favorite of mine as scratches tend to blend in when you use the knife, which is great because as soon as you hold the Crag, you can tell that it's just begging to be used. It just wants to cut. The Crag and the Tala as well both have a reversible deep carry pocket clip that keeps it out of the way much like the Steel Will Tenet, concealing the greatness in your pocket. The Tala bumps things up a notch with radius and milled G10 handles rather than flat, although you still do get flat scales if you opt for the carbon fiber version. Because of the curve of the handle, it nestles into my hand very well. And the blade itself is really cool, flat ground and stone washed as well, and here at the Knife Center, we're having a bit of a friendly argument as to whether this shape is a sheep's foot or a Warncliffe profile. Be sure to tell us what you think it is in the comments, but whatever you call it, it is very cool. The sweep to the spine on the back of the knife here is great for indexing, either with your thumb or your forefinger. And a couple of facets lead down to a very acute point. You can pierce well and get some good cutting done with this blade shape. Next up is one of my personal favorites here today, the Civivi Wyvern. Now much like CJRB is the budget brand for artisan cutlery, Civivi is in fact made by Wee Knife Company. They've exploded onto the scene in recent years thanks to their impressive materials and build quality. For the Wyvern, they trade the premium materials for more budget friendly stuff, but the build quality is still just as high. Now this knife is actually based on the Wee Knife Draken, which is an integral titanium frame lock, so the Wyvern makes a great way to get most of that style at a very attainable price. The FRN handles have the same awesome dragon scale texture, but rather than wrapping around the spine for integral construction, we do get a backspacer 
with a lanyard hole integrated at the back end. Also, since these scales are synthetic, we also get a liner lock instead of the frame lock on the Draken, but there's no blade play at all. We get very nice lock up here. In addition to black, there's several other colors, including your tans and OD greens, but also brighter hues like orange and blue as well. They all get a milled titanium pocket clip, which is a nicer touch than the folded clip on the rest of these knives here. Now it is removable, but it's not movable to another point. It is right side tip up only on this knife. The blade itself flips open very nicely on ball bearings. But you do have a thumb cut out for more deliberate opening if you want to be more subtle about things. The blade and the edge itself is nice and thin, and a hollow grind keeps things even thinner behind the edge, which makes the Wyvern a very precise cutter. I love the flare of the fuller too that starts at the thumb cutout and shoots out the end of the blade. The Civivi Wyvern is very cool, very stylish, and a very capable EDC pocket knife. Finally, we come to the SOG Terminus XR, which is in the running to be one of the best budget knife releases of the year, and it has all the hallmarks of a great EDC. We've got a sub 3 inch blade, stone washed with a flat grind, G10 handles available in crimson or OD green, and even a reversible deep carry pocket clip for unobtrusive carry. The real star of the story though is their new XR lock which holds this knife together. Now they can't call it an axis lock, but this is the same style of crossbar locking mechanism that passes through both sides of the handle and over the tang of the knife. This secures the blade very nicely, and because that bar does go through both sides of the handle, this is a great option for ambidextrous use. Now they have thrown their own spin on it, namely by using a set of ridged plastic tabs that make it easier to actuate the locking bar. This great locking mechanism provides just one of three different opening methods. You can use the dual thumb studs for more deliberate opening, or hit the flipper for a quick snappy action, or you can simply hold the lock bar back and flick it open and close to your heart's content. Sleek, balanced, and addictive to use, the SOG Terminus XR is a fantastic companion on your daily journey. All right, I know I said that was it, but I actually have two bonus picks for you. Each is right around $52, so they just missed our cutoff, but I wanted you to see them anyway. First is the Artisan Cutlery Tomahawk with a unique cleaver style blade. Almost looks like a really broad straight razor. Apart from that wicked shape, this is actually pretty similar to the CJRBs we looked at earlier. We've got G10, a liner lock, ball bearing pivot, and a stonewashed D2 blade. The reason this is part of the Artisan lineup though, rather than CJRB, is that this is just the entry point to this model. They also do higher end versions, including full titanium options with S35 VN or even Damascus steel. But you can still get this great design for just a hair over 50 bucks, which is pretty nice for such a distinctive blade. Lastly, and this time I mean it, is the Best Tech Kendo, which is just one of the few models worthy of attention at just over 50 bucks. The Best Tech Swordfish and the Warwolf especially are other great options. With the Kendo, we get a Tonto style blade that flips open with fantastic action. In fact, it's probably the best on the table in front of me right now, with the Civivi and the CJRB running right behind. The blade is held open with a liner lock and it folds up into a G10 handle. It's straight in profile, but contoured just right for comfort. It makes the Kendo a stout, but still easily managed folder. It has a handful of different colors that you can choose from, and also like the Tomahawk, you can step up to Titanium and S35VN if you want to get fancy. Now D2 may have a reputation as being a little bit harder to sharpen than some of the other simple steels out there, but the fact of the matter is this. There's never been this much high performance at this low of a price before. Adjusted for inflation, of course. So what did you think of our list of the best D2 steel folders that you can get for less than 50 bucks? Be sure to let us know in the comments what you think, or if you have another favorite that we didn't show here. In the meantime, to get your hands on any of them, you can click the links in the description to head over to KnifeCenter.com. And be sure to sign up for our Knife Rewards program while you're there, so you can earn money on a knife that you were going to buy anyway. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time. Yep. Kershaw. Kershaw. We probably can't use that. We probably can't use that. I just said integral two different ways. All at the back end. <laughs> A stainless steel flame flame lock. It's fire, baby. Fire. Please, please. I do the rest of it. <laughs>